All right. Hello, folks. It is Faz here from Faz Lifts. So today I'll be talking about um, Wendler's 531. I'm going to give you my summary of it and how I would improve it. First of all, um, thanks for joining me on my channel. If you guys have a question that you'd like to ask me and for me to answer in a video, uh, please do let me know in the comments. And if you would like to work with me, for me as a coach and a mentor to you in your physique pursuits, then there is a form in the description which you can click on and you can write through and I'll get back to you. All right, so first let's go on with Wendler's 531. Now, I want to start by giving you a bit of a summary of the program, just a very brief summary. So first of all, it's a four week periodized routine which focuses on strength increases in the four big lifts, the overhead press, the squat, the bench press and the deadlift. And these are all emphasized to be done with minimal equipment, okay? So as you guys are aware, Wendler came from a powerlifting background and this is all designed to be done raw or unequipped. It focuses on the rep ranges between five and one. <laughs> well, obviously. <laughs> it's overall a low volume base routine. The additional volume is not part of the periodization. Um, so for example, you could be doing the boring but big after your singles. And he does offer some advice on a stall. So that, in a nutshell, is roughly what Wendler's 531 is. But I'm assuming if you're here on this video, you, you kind of know a little bit about it anyway. So what I wanted to start off with today is I wanted to start off by giving you a historical perspective because I remember when Wendler came out with 531 and I remember what the vibe of the strength and power and, and muscle community was at the time. So basically, this was him moving away from Westside Barbell. Wendler was a prolific writer for Dave Tate and Louis Simmons for both Elite FTS and for Simmons' company, Westside Barbell. Now, like most of us do, me and, and various other people in the industry, they realized that all of this writing could have been used on something for himself. And you see him there on the left when he was falling into powerlifting, literally looks like his face is about to explode any minute, <laughs> any minute. And there with his sort of evolution into his own business, his own company and downsizing quite considerably. At some point, he probably realized that all the writing and the output he was doing could probably be used elsewhere. And also that this lifestyle on the left probably wasn't that sustainable to be that big and that huge and that strong. And he was, I just want to emphasize again, he was a very good writer. Out of all the writers in, of Elite FTS, he was probably the one that I listened to the most when I was trying to learn about Westside because he's intelligent. His style of writing is good. His way of communicating is very good. He writes in a very logical, sequent manner. I can appreciate that. So back to the history. At this point, when Wendler's was released, unequipped lifting was starting to take off. As a side tangent on that, powerlifting and equipment in the early 2000s was synonymous. So what you guys see these days as raw powerlifting and unequipped powerlifting and the, the death of equipped powerlifting, flip that on its head. When I first got into powerlifting, I did my first powerlifting meet in 2001, there were people in the audience, <laughs> they were whispering about the fact that I did not have knee wraps on. They were saying, I could, I could hear him. Like it was, imagine how intimidating that was, 18-year-old guy, 18-year-old um, going to his first competition, going for his first squat, and there are guys in the audience just like murmuring whispers of disapproval going, huh, here's another one who's going to wreck his knees. Here's another one without knee wraps on. Like powerlifting without equipment was just not a thing really in the early 2000s. There was beginnings of a growing body of unequipped lifters, one of whom was me. Um, and so there was a bunch of people who really valued unequipped lifting and raw lifting, and it started to gain some momentum in those early days. So, and for those people, they realized that Westside Barbell and Conjugate just wasn't really, it was hit and miss in terms of how effective it was. So that you can see, I'm starting to build a picture. There are a range of historical factors which led to the catapulting rise of Wendler. Firstly, he wrote a hell of a lot, okay? And he was a very good writer for equipped lifting lifters. And then at some point he realized he wanted to move away from that lifestyle. He wanted to downsize and he wanted to get away from the equipped lifestyle. Secondly, unequipped lifting was starting to take off. And there, within those unequipped lifters, there was a growing body of those guys who realized that actually the conjugate method was very hit and miss for raw lifting. 
it's no surprise that these days most raw lifters don't do conjugate okay and i know there's going to be one guy out there who goes it worked for me yeah congratulations but i'm saying that it's very hit and miss actually just practicing the lifts people started to realize that worked a lot better wendler i believe saw this as a really good opportunity to ride that wave of popularity and then went off broke off from elite fts broke off from louis westside barbell and used that as an opportunity to capitalize on it and release his own 531 it was perfect timing it was part of a definite move away from not only equipment but also being this supersized monster who just couldn't do anything but lift like when you're that big you you can't do a great deal you can't run you can't do anything really without bursting out into sweats right you can't really lift a great deal outside of the massive amounts of equipment that they use certainly not comparable to what you're doing with equipment so there was a shift away from this behemoth who couldn't do anything but lift and just lift an equipment to this every man that you can relate to who's lean who's muscular who's practical who's useful right um this you can see there's a massive shift and it's a shift away from this really exclusive sport of powerlifting where you have to have equipment and you have to be all this and it's just the look of him is very much associated with um illegal supplements on the left and on the right he just looks far more like what an average guy wants to look like and alongside that there was a bunch of stuff about being a man i don't know if you guys remember all that stuff from back in early 531 days there's all this kind of like really like male oriented stuff about what a man should be like and be you know be strong and, and, and useful and, and and tough and all that kind of stuff so it was a definite shift away onto something which is more sellable to the public and i just want to frame the discussion of 531 with that all right so i think we should now discuss some of the positives it forces consistency so it's a move away from unfocused training in general as much as it was a move away from conjugate training so it forces consistency and it gives you a structure which is good um if you come from a background where odds are if you're on this channel you probably have some kind of structure but again bear in mind coming from the early 2000s where there was a real lack of information particularly for raw lifters and unequipped lifters and just your regular joe <laughs> i mean you, you went onto the internet and looked for routines for the regular joe there wasn't that much there whereas now there's a lot so at that point it gave people structure it gave them consistency and it gave them a, a, an insight into periodization which didn't involve the overly complicated and particularly not applicable style of periodization which westside barbell used conjugate training so it gave you a good consistent structure and periodization for something which is useful to you as just a regular guy or girl next thing is you will learn to lift and handle heavy weights so you'll learn you regularly do singles like you'll do singles every month and being strong is not only your ability to produce force but it's your ability but being strong is a skill like you need to be able to learn how to handle singles so you get that practice every single day and i know um quite a few good powerlifters who believe that staying keeping your ability to you to do singles year round is is a good thing so I, that's definitely a positive. Um, I don't necessarily agree with this idea of if you're a powerlifter, you should run in large cycles of like eights and tens and twelves for some of the off season, and then dip down into threes and singles before the competition. I think if you're a powerlifter, you should have the ability to handle heavy weights year round. You don't need to max out year round. You don't need to be at full strength year round, but certainly that skill should be there next in terms of the positives he does offer some guidance on how to beat a stall so that's useful so he encourages you to recycle the weights recalculate the one rep max and then work back on just for that lift so i think that's actually a very good way of doing things so so far there's a lot of good positives for the routine um in the early days wendler didn't actually have anything to do after 531 so it was just basically here's your 531 and then do whatever afterwards in the very early days that was what it was and now the complaints which came through very quickly was there's just a lack of volume in this routine and so initially i think he toyed around with people doing like sprints and jogs and all that kind of stuff and prowler work because bear in mind he was coming from west side so west side if you guys are aware of west side training 
there's they have a big emphasis on gpp so he was very big into that so after the 531 initially he was recommending people do uh, prowler walks and all that kind of stuff but it wasn't actual volume on the lifts then later on he came out with boring but big and there was a bunch of other you know follows up to that i think dave tate came out with some accessory movements as well so later on when they introduced the additional volume as a series of structured options there's like five or six options you can choose based on whatever you like so it's nice because you have the structure and you also have the fun of doing some extra stuff so there is some positives there so overall like you can see there are a lot of positives here i'm not i'm not sort of downing on wendless 531 whatsoever i thought at the time it bridged a, a massive gap in what was um what was required and what was needed for unequipped lifters and just your regular joe and jane who go to the gym and doesn't want to take a bunch of drugs doesn't want to wear equipment doesn't want to bulk up to 300 pounds and just wants to get strong and be able to lift heavy move fast sprint all that kind of stuff okay so it it was it was absolutely catered to that group of people and bear in mind at that point there just wasn't that much out there for them all right so next up some of the negatives and this is probably what you're going to be interested in if you're watching this video so in my opinion these are some of my negative things that i've identified over the years like bear in mind i've watched 531 from the sidelines for like 15 years at this point first negative is that training should be individualized there is literally zero guidance for individualization apart from just choosing your structured extras in terms of the actual base program there is zero guidance for individualization there so if you fit into the box of being suited to the overhead press the bench the squat and the deadlift congratulations if not you're stuffed now as you guys know from from previous videos that i've released please go have a watch of my channel i generally always recommend variations of the main lifts which you are suited to to build the main lifts so for example if you're not a naturally good i don't know bench presser you may try something like the close grip bench press or if the bench is just really difficult for you to recover from again you might try the close grip bench or the incline press if you're not particularly great at doing the low bar back squat you might just practice with the high bar back squat which tends to be uh, less reliant on flexibility issues and all that kind of stuff same with the deadlift stiff leg deadlift potentially easier to recover from you can do more of those so there's no guidance for individualization at all so if you fit into the box of the four big lifts then great in my experience unless your name is ed cohen like you're you're probably going to have one or two of those lifts which you're not particularly good at doing and it could be disastrous like if you like a lot of people if you are a really good deadlifter but you're not a particularly great squatter and you tend to like back your weight up because you you've already got long limbs then well, that's going to be disaster because your quads are going to be insanely underworked and the back of your body is going to be really overworked so it's not going to be good for overall development it's going to limit you at some point but there's no guidance for those people all right and the next thing is the additional volume to the extras which he came out with later on like he initially released the five through one but then after a while was the additional extras like boring but big and all that kind of stuff they're not actually part of the periodization and i think this is a major negative and it's not something that i've really heard people talk about that much because whenever people say it lacks volume someone always replies with yeah but it's got the extras it's like i get that okay but they're not part of the actual periodization they're just tacked on at the end this can send very confusing signals to the body because if it's peak week and if you're doing your signal sync your, <laughs> your signal if you're doing your single and you're also backing up with five sets of bench press well in regards to the overall plan it can send some confusing signals to the body i would rather the periodization for that entire lift be matched across the month now the final point is another one which i've not seen anyone really address in the time that i've seen people talk about wendler and if they have please point it out in the comments but the very cynical amongst us <laughs> who's like me who has seen wendler released this right from the beginning sees wendler's 531 as really nothing more than a peaking cycle you see gains on your one rep max in the first two or three blocks simply because you are peaking from whatever you were doing prior to this so let's say prior to this you were running a really high volume routine where you were doing like 15 to 20 sets you know per muscle group per week 
and then you go on to Wendler's 531. I can almost guarantee you're going to see a strength increase. Why? Because Wendler's didn't build that strength. What you were doing before that built the strength. Wendler's 531 peaked the strength that your previous routine built. So I would ask you to evaluate Wendler's 531 not based on the first two or three blocks, but I would ask you to evaluate it based on a year of doing the program. Peaking routines are a part of powerlifting. You train with a relatively high level of volume all throughout the year. And then before your competition, once or twice a year or however many times you compete, you pull the volume back and you raise the intensity. So you go and do your singles, your triples, all that kind of stuff, just like this routine does. And you peak your strength. So automatically you get stronger. Now, <laughs> I've seen a lot of people over the last sort of decade plus see this peaking effect and think that 531 is absolute magic for like two or three months. And then they, bam, run straight into a wall. I've seen it happen many, many times. I would just be very, very cautious about that. All right, folks. So finally, in summary, this is not a program that I would personally ever do or recommend. And unlike my previous videos, like strong lifts and all that kind of stuff, this is also not where I would recommend, or not a routine where I would recommend any subtle adjustments. Um, I would just, I just wouldn't do the program. It lacks volume on the main lifts, um, aside from on the, on the base lifts. Um, if it has worked for you, perhaps it was due to the peaking effect, unless it worked and continued to work for a year or more. I have had the benefit of seeing people experience the peaking effect for well over a decade now. And so this is why, for that main reason, I am not a fan of 531, unfortunately. Uh, I'm sure that's going to get me some dislikes, but there you go. I have to be honest, um, there are other routines that I've evaluated, like strong lifts, which there has some potential for small minute changes uh, to be very good. 531 is not something that I would ever do, nor would ever recommend to anyone. So that is my analysis. And there we go. All right, folks, thank you for joining me. <laughs> and um, yes, yeah, so if you like the work or if you have something to say about it, if you disagree or you agree, or it's made you think in any way, please do um, write some comments down below and let me know what you're thinking. <laughs> All right, folks, I will uh, see you next time. Take it easy.